Welcome to Leapfall BI Academy course CT140, Dimension Components. In this course, we're going to be um, first defining the dimension component, and then we're actually going to demonstrate creating a couple of dimensions. All right, so let's jump over to our, our data model that we're working toward, so we can refresh ourselves here. We have a few different dimensions we're creating. We have a promotion, location, product dimension that are sourced from our source system, AdventureWorks Sample Database 2012. And we're going to be creating a um, existing dimension here for dim date. We're going to discuss that. Uh, and then also in our fact table, we actually are using a dimension component to get the current version of our header attributes. So let's jump over to our data flow diagram and let's get started out um, with a simple dimension for our dim promotion. In this case, it's uh, very straightforward. We're going to create a dimension with a dimension key on special offer ID. We're going to source that from our DS promotion. Once again, we did not require the DA promotion in this uh, data flow path. So we're going to create this dimension, set the dimension key, set up our output attributes, and uh, we'll be all set. So let's make that happen. I'm going to move over to a browser now. I'm already logged in. Looking at my project list, I'm on CT140, which is our dimension component course. I'm going to go to my dimension types. I'm going to create a new dimension. Like all components, there are templates to start from. In this case, I'm going to be using this D1002 template. This is uh, the most robust dimension uh, load template. This handles multiple batches of records, uh, meaning if you have multiple versions of of uh, dimension records uh, across time. You can just load them all in at one time without having to worry about loading them chronologically. The Fraud BI will take care of all that. And I'm also going to be able to add constraints so I can um, ensure some referential integrity. So I'm going to select that component template and uh, I'm going to call this promotion. Now this particular project has um, uh, prefix set for our dimensions to be dim underscore. I'm not going to add that here. It's, it's automatic. And I'm sourcing this from our DS promotion. I don't have a connection yet, so I'm going to need to go ahead and create that connection. For now, I'm just going to save this using the uh, transform connection. So I'm creating a new connection here, and I'll just call this my DW connection. This will be complete. And uh, we call it our database, like for all BI Academy. And I'm going to put this in a DW schema. Okay, so now I'm going back over to my dimension that I just created. Leaf for all BI will always remember the last uh, component that you were working on within each component type. I'm resetting my destination. All right, now I have my component. I can see I'm sourced from DS Promotion. If I show the extended map, I can see that DS promotion is sourced from PSA special offer, which is sourced from my stage component. It's exactly what I want. So I'm going to go to the detail, dimension promotion. First thing I need to do is set my dimension key. My dimension key here is special offer ID. Okay, I'm done with that. Now I'm going to set up an unknown member. I want to add an unknown member to this dimension, so I'll enable that functionality and for now I'll just um, leave all these descriptions with the defaults. Next I'm going to set up my um, uh, um, output fields and slow change dimension tracking. Um, there's really not a lot I want to change here other than I don't really need to show this load status uh, field. Uh, I also don't need this rogue grid in here. Let's see what else I have here. Max quantity, some dates, uh, type, description, uh, special offer ID, modified date. I don't need modified date in here either. Okay, so that's good enough. I'm going to go over my slow change dimension definition area and I can set any of these that I would like to track changes in any of these buckets. 
if I wanted to track changes in uh, multiple buckets, I would just create multiple versions of that output field. Um, description, that probably is good with type 1, meaning keep the current. Discount percent, I'm going to go ahead and put a type 2 on that so I know each time my discount percent changes for this promotion type. Category, I'll leave the same. Start and end date, um, I'll go ahead and track the changes on those as well. Min and max quantity, I'll track changes on those as well. Okay, we're all set now. I'll I'm done with the uh, slow change dimension tracking and this dimension is ready to be deployed. So I'll go back over to my data flow diagram here. I can now change the status of this to create it. Okay, so we have a few dimensions to create here throughout this model. Uh, you can see here in DM product I have a few to create. Uh, locations can be the same as what we just did. Uh, we're going to come back and address dim date in just a moment. And then we have one dimension actually in our fact path for the dim order header. I'm going to go ahead and uh, um, create all of these dimensions, and I will come back and um, review what we did back in a moment. Okay, I've gone through and created all of the dimension components that are required by our model. Let's take a quick look. So we already created our dim promotion. Let's move over to product. The product was an interesting one. We had three different paths within this data flow. First of all, we have DIM product itself, which is pretty much exactly like the uh, promotion component that we just created. Uh, then we have DIM subcategory and category. Let's start with category actually to, so I can explain how we accomplish this. The first one, DIM category, was exactly like DIM promotion, so I'm not going to recap that. Then, we can see how DIM category and DIM subcategory here are joined into DIM product. So, once again, DIM product, or sorry, DIM subcategory is exactly like DIM promotion, nothing special going on there. But let's go take a look at DIM product because it, it took feeds in from its DS, dimension source as well as subcategory and category. Okay, so here we are at uh, DIM product. Let's take a look at the details. You can see that my key is set here on product ID. It's pretty simple. I have uh, an unknown member defined. I've set up my uh, slow, change slow change dimension tracking uh, all on SCD1, so I'm just going to track current values in this dimension. Okay, so I've joined here to my two additional sources that I need when I load this dimension, a subcategory and category. And um, I've set up those join expressions, both of those um, uh, just joining on the IDs that came in from the source. However, it is important that we order our joins appropriately. Let's take a look at that quickly. The category ID is provided to us in the subcategory dimension. So we've got to make sure that we join to that first. So we have that category ID available to us. All right, with those joins in place, I'm able to get all of the output fields into my dimension. Now, at this point, we have our dimension created, but there's always the possibility that we'll have a change in our subcategory or category information after that record was loaded into a dimension. So we have these secondary passes set up. Let's take a look at one of them, product subcategory. This is feeding in from our dimension source once again, so we have our unprocessed records that are going to come into DIM product subcategory. And then that's going to load or update our DIM product. Let's take a look at that. It's going to be product underscore subcategory. Okay, so this is a subcategory ID, dimension key, and this is the important part. This is, we have our load options set here, so let's take a look at those definitions. What we're doing here is we're saying that we're going to load an existing table. This component will not create a new table, and it says the name of that table is DIM product. So it's utilizing that from product dimension that was already created for us. And we're not going to insert any new records here because we just want to update records that exist in DIM product. Pretty simple. 
and then we're only including the output fields that are uh, to be updated. So we have subcategory ID because that's where our dimension key is. And we're going to update the category ID and the, the uh, name of the subcategory. The same thing is done on product category. You can see that I'm having a dimension key or category ID. Have my load options set the same way. And I'm only updating my category ID with my category name. Okay, so with all of that in place, I've now got all of the components required for my uh, dimension, with the exception of our PSA updates, which uh, we're going to go back and take care of in the PSA component course. So DM product, same situation here, we're all set. DM location, there was nothing special here, it's exactly the same as DM promotion. Uh, let's go to uh, the fact sales. We had one dimension required here because we want to know the current version of all of our sales order headers. Um, I did go back in and update this transformation to include this join. So that was uh, pretty much exactly like what we just saw uh, in, in the other examples, such as dim promotion. Now dim date is a little bit special. We're not sourcing our date from AdventureWorks sample database. We're going to create a date dimension. So let's take a look at how we created that date dimensions and then made it available in LeapFrog BI. So this is a, a very simple um, common table expression here that recurses across uh, a date range. So I just set a start and an end date, set up my, my uh, anchor, and then I have a recursion here across uh, which is going to create all of my different records for date. So you could put as many attributes in here as you want. I just put some common attributes for now, and I loaded that into my dim date. And that's what we're looking at here. I have a, I've created a database called the Fraud BI Academy Common, uh, just to simulate that this would be our, our shared dimensions uh, here. And if I just select on that, I can see that got my one record per day. I have an ID set up here, which is an integer, which is what I want. And I don't have a record for every day from the start to my end date. So with that in place, I then went over and I created a profile, just as we did in our staging. And I uh, so I dropped in my, my uh, SQL statement here. I pointed my source to that same database. And once I executed it, I know that it is... Um, in good shape. I know that I'm able to profile my source now accurately. So with that profile in place, I then went back over to LeapFrog BI and I created a new dimension, but this time I'm using this existing dimension template. And this is just a template that says, I already have a dimension out there, just use it. That's that's what I want to do. Uh, I can download my profile here, uh, profile template here, just like I do when I stage. And then I'm going to use this template to create the um, dimension. I've already done this, so I'm not going to repeat it. Let's just go ahead and pull up that dimension. Uh, it's going to be dim date. Okay, I can see that the connection it's using is a new one called common, and that's pointing to that new database I just pointed out, and then we're putting this in our DW connection. There's no lineage here, up or down, because this is an existing component. Setting this up was really um, quite simple. All I have to do is modify the keys. I selected the key of my date dimension. This dimension doesn't track history, so I don't need to select those fields. After doing that, I'm done. So now I have utilized an existing dimension. We did this, we did this with date, which would be very common, but of course this would be something that, that you would do whenever you're trying to conform dimensions across many different marts. All right, so we have all of our dimensions created now. Um, I will upload the, um, the project that we use for our profile and that date dimension, as well as the uh, example of the CTE to this course. Um, we'll see you in the next course.